chairman of the commission, the wife, the relatives, the, 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 the colleagues, and everyone who, who, who was there. We are all left speechless when we saw the situation is in right now. We are left speechless. You could see, but actually, I don't want to mention, but uh, the situation is terrible. It's terrible. That's what I can say. Uh, has he tried to tell you, uh, like, how he got into that situation? Well, he tried to narrate, like I've said, with himself difficult to narrate to us the ordeal he went through, how things unfolded there, and at one time he blacked out. He said he blacked out. So what, what, what it exactly was happened to him? What exactly happened to him according to his explanation? He didn't know what happened before because he was in a procession. When he retreated to his room, he just had people kicking doors from the left, right, center. Then he decided to stand still in the room and put his hands up like a surrender in the attackers and the invaders because he knew he had no way out. He couldn't run, he couldn't fight back, he couldn't resist. So like any other person under such circumstances, he said, it's nothing but he yielded to the attackers, to the invaders. Basically, that's what he explained. So when he stood still and they attacked, the, the attackers entered, finally broke the door. Immediately, beating him up, tearing him. Some had iron bars and what you know, they started hitting him left, right, center. So in the process he said he blacked out. He blacked out only to realize, I think he, after picking himself up, uh, it was, he was being detained at some detention center at the airfield. So he was picked from and taken to Google. The rest, you know what happened uh, when he was taken to Google. But the torture that we unleashed on him, the kind of pity, the kind of harassment, the kind of uh, uh, mistreatment, inhuman and degrading treatment he was subjected to, occasion that one told a pain, that suffering, that agony, the trauma is facing right now, and eventually, He's in the state he's, he's in right now because of that kind of uh, uh, torture he was subjected to. So basically, that's what he could explain. But I've said with a lot, a lot of difficulty. Right now, you cannot tell what's going to happen because, as I've said, he can hardly sit. He can't sit, actually. He supports himself. I mean, he can't support himself. He's being carried by the soldiers. Even for personal management, he has to be supported when he's asleep, when he's uh, doing whatever a normal being should be doing, he's being supported by soldiers. Do you think... Kind of sort of said, yeah, they, they, they tried to, to give him some small medication, some little medication. He said he was injected with things he cannot tell, and of course, uh, the brute, the doctor, whom they said is taking care of him, I think he's at the rank of a colonel. Captain. No, Captain. Captain. Kirilla, uh, in, uh, tips. So, that's the man they brought the soldier who tried to explain to us. We asked him, have you carried out any examination, thorough examination, to tell exactly what, what happened to him? Said they were helpless, they don't have the equipment. So, what basically they are trying to do right now, because of the deteriorating state of uh, his health, they decided to now they are frantically looking around. According to him, actually, he did not mince words on this. Said we are working around the clock. You can see that they are actually trying to, to see how they can seek for medical treatment elsewhere. We asked him which facility they attend. We could not explain whether it's a military facility, a little hospital, 
or a private one, if not export to us. They said, but what we should know that today they are struggling to ensure that they take him to the hospital for thorough examination and see if he can get urgent treatment. Otherwise, his health is deteriorating by the minute. What we witnessed there, everybody was in tears. Everybody who saw him there was literally in tears. So the chairman of the commission assured us, human rights the chairman of the Uganda Human Rights Commission assured us that uh, before close of business today, they would have come up with something. So we wait for the state, the report they are going to make, the statement they are going to issue about this, and to address the situation. We insisted that actually the doctor should be allowed in. Unfortunately, they broke in. And we don't know why. They said the doctor should not enter, and the doctor was not there. We wonder why. Because under the Constitution, it is his right. If you looked at the Bill of Rights in the Constitution, apart from the next kin, the lawyers, uh, relatives and what not, a, a person detained in, in such a facility is entitled to his personal physician. They have blocked the personal doctor. You know, the reason as to why they have decided to take that kind of no, me, and Do you think it's the reason they are denying the media to get to the right picture? No, if you are to get that picture, it's horrible, it's terrible. If That's... anyone, if I'm to, I've tried to summarize, to give you what I've seen, what I've woke up, if you are to get that picture, oh my God, it's terrible. He's in a very, very bad shape. That's all I can tell you. He is in a very, very bad shape. If you looked at him right now, you can't help shed tears if you are a real human being. If you saw him, you can't help shed tears. It's terrible. It's terrible. This is what I can tell you. So that's why they are also panicking. They are almost panicking about his health. Because they don't know what's going to happen. So that is the situation. Okay. Yeah. That's why they are denying the media. Yeah, exactly. Since That's what they're doing. 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 That's what they're Thank you. 